What's up, everybody? It's story dive time. We're back on the train. I'm here with Kai, the wonderful story man himself. Hello. And sorry, <laughs> uh, a chicken sandwich spawned on my floor, and I needed to eat it. It was Sally that, made it, but that sounds amazing. Dude. I haven't eaten yet, so I got it. <laughs> yeah, I looked over, and there was a chicken sandwich, like literally on the ground. I'm like, oh, look at that. <laughs> <laughs> no worries at all. Um, you gotta, you gotta eat up so you can, you know, tell your stories and be energized for the train ride. Um, so this week we are going to be talking about video games and what makes video games as a whole medium. Why are they good for storytelling? Why are they bad for storytelling? And all that sorts of stuff. Um, but real quick before we get into that, Kai, uh, you have a sh- uh, you have a story to share with us. Oh, I was, I was literally like, I guess we're just skipping my story. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I gotta give, them, I gotta, like, oh, no. I, I gotta give the viewers a little, or the, or the listeners, a little sneak peek into what this episode is going to be about. Um, even though it's probably in the title, but yeah, well, it's still, but <laughs> yeah, we have it a, makes sense, makes sense. We have a new segment on this podcast. I'm not sure quite what we've decided to call it yet, but we're trying to uh, tell our own stories that we've either experienced throughout the week or things from our lives or it, just anything. We're, we're practicing our, our storytelling skills on the spot. And so this week we're putting Kai on the spot to tell us a fantastic story. And I can't wait to hear it. Um, are we going to name these? Because I have a name. Yeah, no, give me a name. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I'm, this, this story I'm calling The Day the Military got cream puffs oh my gosh that's an incredible name dude and now i want cream puffs. <laughs> it's, it's 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 interesting and okay a uh, bit of backstory with this uh this happened so for those of you who don't know i did uh i i'm a member of the church of jesus christ of latter-day saints and i i was able to serve a two-year mission to proselyte uh in the wonderful wonderful state of hawaii it was amazing in so many ways um so anyway i i was in hawaii doing my thing as a as a missionary where where those classic white shirt and ties and backpacks and all that stuff anyway so i'm in hawaii yes um and we always have a companion that we serve with uh, I'm not gonna say this guy's name. Uh, he was he was quite the character, and that's a story on its own. But anyway, Ooh. we also had cars in Hawaii. Nice. Um, oh yes. Some more backstory is I took a huge journal of all of my experiences uh, to to be able to call upon later, and I was very proud of it. Write in a journal if you if you if you feel that you should, or you're questioning, like, should I write in a journal or not? You should. It's yeah. a good idea. You got to mark because... your story down, you know? It helps you get your story exactly. well, in, so... in permanent ink, bro. Yeah, exactly. I was remembering this story, and I was I was kind of jotting it down so I could tell it, and because I, I want to do it justice. And then I thought, wait a minute, I have it in my journal. I started reading in my journal, and it gets way crazier than I remember it being. Well, so Stop teasing us, yeah, bro. I'm tell excited us. About- that was the story. So <laughs> I, I was I in Hawaii. We, <laughs> I can't wait. We have at least in this in our mission where our the zone of Hawaii that we were serving in, we got to have a car. And uh, it was it was there were some rules around the car. You gotta keep it clean, you have to take care of it, make sure it's all your tires are good and your mm. uh mm. your oil's checked and just Take care of the car because we don't want any missionaries to get hurt, right? Sure. So, yes. One of the rules of that is you could not have anyone that was not a proselyting missionary in the car. You couldn't give people rights, at least in our mission. It, there were some specific reasons for that, but that was the rule. Uh, I feel like that so, makes sense, though. I feel like that rule makes sense. It makes sense. sense. You just don't really. I mean, we could give rights to some people, like other missionaries, if they needed rights, but. Sure. Anyone other than that, like we just couldn't give rides. Okay. So anyway, okay. all this pretext out of the way, I am driving in a place called Lanakila. It's the little city, kind of off to the east. No, no, to the west of Honolulu. Mm. 
So we're kind of in the heart of the like the big city, but not quite. We're like okay, almost out of that technically. And I'm just kind of driving to our next destination. I stop at an intersection like any other time, like it's normal, right? Yeah. And this guy, who I can only describe is your your most uh, stereotypical military guy, like camo pants, white tank top jacked as heck buzz cut like the crew military bro. buzz cut thing dog like, tags out bro like guile energy from street fighter yeah straight up guile energy maybe <laughs> he wasn't quite as like mega built well, as sure, guile sure but like but yeah like but like the same kind of energy you know like yeah sure yeah same like energy it. yeah he comes right up to the car and he knocks on the window. And I, he, it's happened sometimes before. Usually homeless people would do that and like try to hand us something or ask for money. Sure. I just, you, you can only do so much in that in situation. But this guy rolls down the window and I'm like, can I help you? And he's like, yeah, I need a ride. Can you give me a ride? And before I could even say anything, my companion... This my my guy my uh, person I'm with your partner in crime. unlocks my I would say in crime <laughs> I was not affiliated with this I was a victim <laughs> okay. so he unlocks the door <laughs> and the dude just climbs right into the back seat right in there without a second thought and he says okay drive and dude did i i started driving oh man. i was not even about to question what in the freaking world was happening and i i'm like super nervous now because what well, i do i was like eight, 19 years old i wasn't even 20 years old yet mm -hmm. in in a foreign land not really it's still the u.s but yeah, you know you were really in a foreign land home. you were far from home and there's this jacked dude in the back of my car and i'm like where do you need to go and he's like i need to go to lily hop bakery and if for those who don't know what that is it's it's like the most famous bakery on hawaii like oh, people man. people will fly in to go see that bakery specifically wow. for the cream puffs oh. so i just was like dude this guy like carjacked us for some cream puffs dude i would what carjack someone heck? for some cream puffs i'll tell you right now well i don't know but so <laughs> i forgot the puffs. situation was super okay but would you like actually jump into someone's car and like carjack i don't know if this guy was armed or not either way i don't know maybe we just kind of started going you really talked up that bakery like i'm i don't know dude i'm thinking okay, about it but i thought here's <laughs> the thing some guy that like might <laughs> definitely be armed and definitely knows <laughs> at least like two ways to take you down and possibly kill you climbs into the back of the car and it's just like hey drive but why where would, am i going why am i going to get mugged to? Like, but why would he want to like he's asking a stranger for a ride i feel like you're doing him a service well okay asking is kind of a strong term there it was more like he said Hey, I need a ride, and then shoved himself into the back of the car without I mean, my permission. I guess. I guess. Okay. Yeah. I'm. You're right. I mean, you were. Let me you be were, clear. Yeah. Let me be absolutely clear. There was zero consent on my part to let this man inside my vehicle. Yes, that is correct. <laughs> I'm just saying that, like, if it were me, there's a good chance I would have let him in. I'm okay. You know what? Because of the rules, if it like if it would okay, let me ask you this: If would you have let him in if you were like if there was no rules against giving people rights, Maybe. There were some other really sketchy situations about that in that we were at a really dark intersection and I had no idea oh, so really who this person was. This was at night. Okay, and yeah, so that I makes had, it worse. That I mean, makes it a lot worse. Yes, this guy could be. So at the moment, <laughs> maybe I spoiled it. I didn't actually know he was in the military until he got into the car. Before then... No idea who he was. It was just some dude in camel pants and a tank top yeah, getting you, into my car. The more you talk about it, the more I'm like, maybe not. But I'm just saying, those cream puffs sound great. Sure. I, 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 well, need, I need to hear okay. the rest of this. I need to hear how this ends because... Yeah, okay. This you is gotta, really I was like, you gotta let me finish. So we're driving a couple blocks. And, uh, dude, I don't say anything. I say absolutely. I have no idea. I just am like in survival mode, freezing up. Like, I, my only objective is to drive 
where he needs me to drive, which is a bakery. Uh-huh. And my companion, dude, he's chilling. He's having a great time. He was kind of, he he, he really liked to watch me squirm. He was not oh, a great no. friend. He was a great friend in a lot of ways, but he was not a great person. Yeah, maybe is yeah, what like, I can say. I mean, anyway, I, yeah, that, I feel like there's a lot of people like that that like to poke people's buttons, but that, he seemed, sure, he seemed yeah. like he, he was going a bit too far. With oh yeah this was oh. we we shared some words after oh. this oh, instance but um he he started asking about this guy's life and it was weird because i could never have him do that to anyone just like on the street he would never talk to people like that ever but then now that we're in this potentially life-threatening situation now he wants this guy's life story so he starts asking what do you do and he's like oh i'm in the army i live on the hickam air force base uh and he tells me this i have this written in my journal january 6th 2018 let's see he explained to us that his four-year-old and eight-year-old children had taken his jeep and driven to lily hub bakery oh what what do you mean and as in his kids stole his Jeep and drove no, I, it safely. I, I got following that much. all traffic I just, laws to Lily Hub Bakery to get some creep puffs. I don't. Okay, okay. Is there more to this story? Yes, there is. There okay. Is. I, before, I'm going to withhold my <laughs> questions. Okay, I'm going to withhold my questions until okay. you're done. <laughs> I have a lot of questions. So we're, we're, we're driving. I learn he's in the military. I learn he's been in the military for like three or four years. He has two kids. He loves his kids to death. I also learned that he's armed. Currently, uh, like, what do you mean? Was he like, even more oh, yeah, nervous. I have a gun on me. I don't know. I like, how did it you was so that? long ago, oh, okay. and that was okay. it. Just came up in conversation that he had a weapon on him. Maybe my companion asked or something like that. Yeah, he's anyway. like, he's he like, do least... you conceal carry? And he's like, yeah, I do, conce-, or something like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, there was that, and he also did have a knife pouch. Now that I remember this, like it's coming back to me. He definitely did have at least like a combat knife on his belt. Mm. so anyway has is has weapons with which he could use to hurt me if he decided so i i just keep driving and we have this steady conversation and in my mind i think to myself there's how in the this guy's totally pulling our chain how in the world did a four and an eight year old get into his jeep somehow start the car safely get out of his driveway drive several blocks through city traffic city traffic is no joke people are mean they are people's ugly side comes out in city traffic Uh how did a four and an eight year old possibly even remotely navigate that traffic safely to get to a bakery and then what did they do they go it's a did they have money I have no idea. And, and, and like, also, that's, how did how did he know thing. that they did this? Exactly. Well, so these are all the questions that are going through my mind at like right. racing speeds. What is happening? I don't understand. Right. Who is this guy? What is going on? Yes. And we get to Lily Hop Bakery, and I've never been there up to that point. I had never been there because it was technically out of my specific area of jurisdiction right. that I was supposed to cross light in. So I'd just never been there. Uh, and this guy like points and he says, look, it's the Jeep. And I turn and I look and there's this dark gray Jeep sitting in front of Lilia Bakery. And before I can ask any questions whatsoever, I'm still moving, by the way, at like 10 to 15 miles an hour because uh-huh. I'm still trying to kind of get in and out of traffic and get, get try and get car. in. Dude, he this guy the opens the door <laughs> oh, no, and he fails. He he straight up bails out of the car, kicks the door shut, and I'm forced right back into traffic, and it's over. And that's that's it. The, I, so it's like you don't even know if I, his story I, was true. I have no clue. All I can say is that the Jeep was definitely there. There was a Jeep. <laughs> and it's, it's it's a situation to be that it's like. I have no idea what in the frick just happened. And there's so many questions and I can't answer a single one of them. Cause this guy just jumped straight out of a moving vehicle into a, like a combat role and then walked away and I was forced into traffic. Never saw him again. Not one time. Never. Wow. Um, wow. I mean, what is there to say? Like, I feel like your feelings are completely understandable. 
I feel like looking back on it, it's like a very surreal and kind of like, in a way, comedic story. Like, I'm not undermining like how terrifying it was at the time, but like, if you look at everything on paper, it's just like, how is this real? You know, like, how is this? Oh, yeah. No, I mean, is this like, a even real story, even like seconds after. <laughs> I'm like laughing my head off of like, what the heck just happened? <laughs> what do I even do about that? Okay, that's like 15 minutes of my life that I'll never get back. I still have no, like to this day, sometimes that story comes up and I think to myself, did his kids really drive that? I, I'll never know. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I who knows, bro? The kids wanted the cream puff. It wasn't him. That was like the plot, mm. that was the plot twist I wasn't expecting. I was like, oh man, I may, I, I'm, a grown man just wants some cream puffs. Nah, dude, it's, it's his kids who wanted cream puffs so bad that they took his car and drove it into the city. Apparently, apparently, supposedly, because like, honestly, if, I was, if I was in a car and someone was like hitchhiking and they told me that something like that happened, like it's one thing to have someone get in your car that you don't know. It's another thing to have them be a military guy who's armed. And then it's a third thing for their story to like not sound realistic. So it's like all three of those things are kind of only flags. for there to be evidence later to like corroborate his unrealistic story. Yes. You know, there uh -huh. was the Jeep. There was a Jeep and he wanted it so bad that he literally rolled out of the car without like waiting for you to stop or anything. So, uh, yeah, what a, so, that's, a, that's, that's a great, great story. I that was awesome. I thoroughly enjoyed that. It just kept getting better. I was like, I was like, this is already interesting. The fact that like some guy is knocking on your window, but then it just kept going and going. Um, but dang. Uh, challenge to all the listeners, uh, comment below what you think really happened. Like yeah. what you think the, have you, the real story was. Comment below. Have you ever seen a four and an eight year old drive a car to get cream puffs before? Let us know. Yeah. <laughs> she imagine like... I meet one of the other witnesses that can also corroborate that yeah. story for me. Yeah, so like, someone in the comments crazy. is like, hey, I, I'm that kid. I went to go get cream puffs with my dad's car. <laughs> like, what? Well, huh? <laughs> That'd be crazy, dude. If you're listening. That'd be really crazy. And you're one of those kids. Leave a comment. Um, but wow, that was a great story, Kai. <laughs> I, I loved it. You know what I love more? Okay, that, that, that sounds bad. You know what else I love? <laughs> I was like, dang, dude. Yeah, I was like, I, no, I can't do them like that. What I, the other thing I love in the world, besides Kai's stories, is video games. I'm a huge video game guy. I already talked uh, I about... I thought you were going to say anime. Well, no, see, I already talked about anime, and you guys should, listening should go listen to that episode right now, if you haven't. We'll be here when you get back. That was a great episode. Um, but this episode, we're not talking about anime, we're talking about video games, which is my, my other love besides anime and Kai's stories. Um, so why do I love video games? There are so many reasons why I love video games, but I think as, cause growing up, I didn't care. I didn't really care for stories. I'll be, I'll be real. Uh, stories and narratives didn't really matter to me, uh, until I became older and I started to really understand. I, I mentioned in our first episode, I think. Uh, the first story that really impacted me that I remember was King Kong and having that emotional response to seeing a character I care about die. Um, so as I've gotten older, I've, I've really learned to appreciate uh, games that have that kind of narrative. Um, but I want to start out because there's so many different facets of video games because, you know, of course, any, any sort of medium uh, is a good platform for storytelling. But I, I want to dive into why video games stand out or what video games bring to the table that makes it different from other forms of mediums like like if like why would you prefer playing a video game to experience a story versus watching a movie to experience a story and that kind of thing so um mm. yeah do you have any initial thoughts on that um or any any points to bring up about what sets it apart as a medium uh i think just like given the 30 seconds i've had to kind of gather thoughts after <laughs> the jeep 
story i was maybe yeah. i was a little stuck back in in that yeah. car for a second reliving it uh i think video games are very um like interactive is kind of the word that comes mm. to mind yes. the ability to interact with the story and almost i mean yes you, a lot of story rpgs role-playing games or, or games with a uh, specific story they have kind of this linear story that's meant to be told but somehow you being able to play the character makes you almost feel like you're the one making the story happen yes like the progress through the story happens because of your investment whereas with a movie the the movie's going to keep playing whether you like it or not unless you have yeah. like a remote or something yes. but uh, if you just sat there nothing would happen whereas in a video game uh nothing happens at all unless you take action yes absolutely and that that ability could to kind of interact with the story in your own on your own terms i think is something that makes it a very unique medium yes the uh the first thing i had written down here was interactive experiences so you nailed that right on the head huh. and it's, Gosh, it's all of my nailed old, it right to the wall all of these... right to the side <laughs> of the train bam oh nailed man. it nailed it um i have a bunch of uh with a doubloon nail it's oh. like a, a nail made of doubloon gold Oh geez, you yeah. melted it down. Where'd you get all those doubloons from? You've been taking. We well, gotta do stash? something with them. <laughs> yeah, dude, you left it un oh, unoccupied no. for a few seconds. Yeah, I came uh... in and swiped him during the She Hulk debate. Go yeah. watch that if you haven't yet. I gotta go. Okay, dude, we're you know what? Yes, go watch every episode. Go, go. You, you should even go and watch. Uh, our, our, you have a YouTube short. You should go watch that too. Um. Anyways. Oh uh... yeah, we have a YouTube short. <laughs> All of our, all of my points I have here are kind of interconnected um, because, okay. you know, I, I feel like that's a good way to sum up why video games are good uh, is that um, it's like a mixture of every medium uh, and then some. So it's like, it, like uh, for instance, if you look all the way back, we started with tech. So, you know, like you could tell stories via like language, but like in terms of entertainment and uh kind of like preserving stories the only way to experience it was through writing and then as time went on we added music to the fray and then as that went on then we put the music and the writing together and then we had visuals and pictures and then we put the the writing and the pictures and the visuals together and like it has kept progressing and progressing until like now we have video games which are like the culmination of it all so you have text in it you have music in it you have you know, movie level cutscenes, and you can actually be the character. You can you can actually interact with the world and make decisions. And so it's like it's like just the pinnacle of everything. But you know, of course, it's a little, it can be a little rocky around the edges. Um, and we're gonna dive into that in just a bit. But uh, I do think that you know, it having all of the other mediums qualities like really makes it a good way to experience stories it when done right you know yeah wasn't there a time where it was like film was just music and like every few seconds the screen would stop and someone would like flop a like an actual disc with text on it or like a chalkboard in front of the thing to determine what everyone's saying bro I... am i remembering that right <laughs> i don't know what you're talking about with the chalkboard but I, I feel like silent films, you know, it was literally just music. Yeah, it, was it not a chalkboard? Well, are you saying that someone would actually come out with a chalkboard? Because what I'm remembering... No, no, like it would, they would put it in front of the... the yeah, okay. I, uh, I, broadcaster yes. thing. I, I, to me, it was just like a, a wall of text. I don't know how they did it, but it, if it was a chalkboard, uh, you're absolutely right. Yeah, because that's what it was. It was literally, it, it would show uh, a little bit of footage. And then it would show an image of text while like a, a track went through the whole thing. Um, and sometimes okay, it was a live yeah, orchestra. I... Sometimes it was a it was live orchestra. So it's like, yeah, music, text, footage, you know, uh, that was like the basis of movies. But it's just crazy how we're able to incorporate it all. Like when you play a video game, it's like you have the text boxes, you know, and then uh, you have like the cutscenes, and then you have like, you know, the graphics and then the music. And it all just is just this amazing symphony of, you know, uh, things that immerse you, right? 
So my ne my next point uh, going into that would be just how immersed you can get in video games, I, I think is a very strong thing for them. Because I feel like, like I've been able to get immersed in movies sometimes. And usually when I do, I have to go to the movie theater because it's like, uh, it's a really easy way to get immersed because you're, you know, the stereo and the screen's so big and you're, you're literally driving and paying for something to have this experience. And you're like, you're dedicating your time to it. But I don't know. I, I feel like it's still really, even, even with all that setup, it's still really hard for me sometimes to get completely immersed in a movie. But I, there, I've had many occasions where I play a video game and I like lose track of time. I lose myself in the game. I, completely taken in by the world and the music and everything so uh, um, i feel like that's another thing going for it do you have any other uh points towards uh what sets it apart well uh not necessarily it's more of like a not really a tangent but like getting a uh pulling a string out of your ball of yarn for a second and thinking <laughs> about it and sure. deciding to put it back in uh, what a, what a visual! But, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's I'm I'm on one with it. it's that chicken sandwich, man. It's filling filling my creative juices. Oh yeah! Uh, oh yeah! I had completely forgotten what I was. Oh yeah! So you, there there's like a. I mean, I don't know if you remember. A lot of people our age will remember, kind of, about a decade and a half ish ago, where. People, all these scientists were like, it'll rot your brain. It'll, it'll kill you. Kids <laughs> yeah. are getting addicted. Uh -huh. They're, yep. they're blowing up combat <laughs> cars on the street. They're blowing each other up. They're, they're driving their know. Jeeps to the cream puffs. Yeah. They, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the, there was all this science. And of course, it all ended up kind of falling flat entirely, which in turn basically made it completely inconsequential. And now people are just yeah. kind of like, yeah, video games are here. They, yeah. We can't stop it. It's, I mean, it's vid here. Video game addiction is a very real thing, but it's not like taking over the world or inherently making kids stupid. Like I would say, it's right? Like, it's it's. Just I do think as there's... bad as any other addiction that. Uh, yeah, I feel like anybody can get addicted to anything, you know. So, but well, that's, what that's a I was going to say with your with the whole immersion thing is that he, what. In your case, with you talking about it as a difference from going to the theaters, the theaters, yes, you still are, uh, you're taking the time to like sequester every other element of your life and make this the one aspect of you to focus on. And yet still, it can be kind of hard to com yeah. like fully immerse yourself in the moment mm -hmm. because you're just not, you're not being active. You're not yes. actively doing anything about your situation. Yes. Whereas with a video game, I think the reason that so many times you can lose yourself in it is there's always, uh, with the exception of maybe like mobile games or some JRPGs, you can every action you take has a very direct result very direct kind of result yes. of progress some would call it a dopamine kick which would be you know more possibly on the addictive side but either way uh i digress on that point it's kind of a your direct actions have direct results and it's immediate every time and so you can always keep track of your progress is it interesting to say there are lots of times where I'll just hang out in main menus and just like check all the progress that I make and how much time I've spent mm, and I, what I, I like, even though I've seen my inventory like 400,000 times in the story, I'll still, Oh yeah. I remember when I got that trinket and just kind of like listen to the music and look through the menus because every single thing tells me, Hey, you're doing great. They're making progress. You're doing great. You know? Yes. I, cause I, I'm very interested in not, not only your opinion, but everyone listening. Like, I, I definitely might be uh, not someone who can get immersed very easily. Like, I think that is something that's very hard for me in particular. I was going to mention that, uh, you know, even when I watch a movie, I can't get immersed. And, I, you know, I feel like that isn't like an uncommon thing. But I, I don't know. I, I have a very hyperactive mind. 
And I don't know if that has to do with how I was raised. I don't know if that has to do with like the fact that I grew up with video games. Maybe my my tastes are different. Like that, that's a whole theory. I don't know if that's true because you know people that are growing up with iPads, TikTok. Like are people are getting shorter attention spans. So maybe part of it's how we were raised. And you know people that have ADHD, it's not like like some people have it because they're born with it. Some people have it because they don't. But um, you know when I watch a movie, if I'm not like the movie has to be really captivating, um, which most movies are capable of at least being mostly captivating for me. But it's like, if it, I need something to do, which is like something that video games offer, is like they give you that thing to do uh, with like your hands and with your brain. Like one reason why I love playing uh, like Super Smash Brothers, for instance, is because I love move my hands so fast. I love, you know, there's never a moment in that match where I have time to think about anything else, you know? And, so, and like, I feel like a, mm. good, a good movie kind of like fills that same void where it's like, I never had like a minute to think about what am I going to do after the movie and everything, you know? Because there's some movies where it's like, there, a scene happens and you're like, oh man, this is kind of boring or I don't want to watch this or whatever, right? And you're like, like there's scenes happen that are slow sometimes, but like, you know, those movies where you walk in and you walk out and you're like, where did the time go? You know, like I sat down yeah. and I blinked and like, it was incredible, you know, like it was it's like you, you couldn't take your eyes off it, but it's, it's very rare. So I do think that video games are more consistent in that way. Cause for, for people like me, at least I'm speaking for, for someone who has a very go, go, go mind that can get derailed so easily because uh, I get so easily distracted. Even when we're talking in this podcast, my mind a lot of the times has to try super hard to not, lose track of what we're talking about because it just wants to <laughs> go 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 um yeah but yes so did you have anything to add to that real quick before i was i'm gonna move on to the next point oh uh, no i'm tossing the yarn back to you okay it, thanks, it, the bro. strings back it's all intact Ooh, i might have like snuck a doubloon in there for you but I am, uh, currently, yeah, it's all in your court man i'm currently rolling the yarn up with a fork like spaghetti and i'm going to eat it what it was in a ball you well, took it from its ball state and made it spaghetti? Yes. Uh, it was delicious. Okay, on to the, <laughs> on to the next point. Because um, you brought this up uh, before we went on that little tangent. Um, the, like, the fact that you, you can make choices. I feel like this is my last point about the, what differentiates it. But you can make decisions that actually affect the narrative. Okay, because now, now if we actually, because we've been talking about why it's a good platform for narratives, but if we actually talk about what the narratives can be, because this is something that I think only video games can do, like primarily. It, like I've seen, like uh, the only thing I can think of, right? Because there's, there's like maybe a couple of like choose your own adventure movie style things, like maybe on a extras on a DVD for a Shrek or something, or maybe... For like, you know, the thing that comes to my mind is uh, if, if any of you guys know Markiplier, he has a, uh, I, don't, I don't know if you call it a series, but he has, uh, you know, a couple different things he's made that are on YouTube that are choose your own adventure. But video games are like, this is, this is what video games really can do is you have a story and it's not, it's not set in stone. You know, if you watch Shrek, if you watch, you know, Endgame or hunger games like it's gonna go the same way every time but games have a an in, inherent replay value uh because the, it's never going to be the same like so th this is uh this is going to be an interesting subject actually i'm excited to talk about so i think that there is a main narrative like what would you want to call it like the the story that never changes um you know what i mean um we could call it that yeah, so we have the story, the unchangeable story, like the the set in stone story, right? It's kind of like fate or like destiny, I guess you could but call then it. Video games offer, I think, two other kinds of narrative. Okay, there is the 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 multiple path story, right? Like the choose your choose your own adventure story, right? Which would be games that have multiple endings, games that have multiple interactions. So. You know, uh, Resident or Silent Hill, and Undertale, and uh, do you have any any good examples of games with multiple endings? Mass Effect. Mass Effect, definitely, definitely. 
um, Stanley Parable. Um, th- there's plenty of games Stanley out Parable. there where you get to pick where you go. And but th- but Dude, you- Kyle is famous. I, I don't think I've played Sorry. that one. I totally do it. To reel it off of you is super hard, but Kyle's is famous. It's an indie game that I played with some friends. It, it gets weird. <laughs> that, that's all you have to say about it is it gets weird. Well, I, there's more, <laughs> but you have a point, and I want I want to hear your point rather than okay, go okay. off on my but, weird yarn tangent. So that, that um you have the, the set in stone story, and then you have the one with multiple paths where it's like you can play the game in a certain way, but it still has these key points that you have to meet. So it's like you can either go this way or this way, essentially. And some of them go more in depth. Like, for instance, Undertale has, like, three different paths. and But then there's a bunch of micro paths that are, like, attuned to who you talked about or who you killed or let live or whatever. And then, like, like those are cool. But then I think the, the coolest thing about games to me, this is the most fascinating part, is the, the I want to call it the micro story, which is the story that you make through your gameplay and to be more specific with this it's like if you play let's say uh tears of the kingdom or breath of the wild either either or like you or or skyrim like that that kind of game right like let's let's use skyrim as an example you have the main story quests throughout skyrim that are the 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 set in stone story right and then you have the side quests which are kind of like the choose your own story, right? Uh huh. And then you have the micro story, which I would call the gameplay, where you like, and it's personalized to you, where you go out and you have this crazy adventure that is completely personalized to you and your gameplay style and what you experience. And it's not really replicatable. Like, there are some people, like, I, I've played Breath of the Wild, I've played Skyrim, and I've had these things happen to me that probably will only ever happen to me and i have i have these stories to tell people i like i think people have plenty of these from like gta i think gta is a big one for this too where it's like i did did, did this crazy thing and i hijacked this car and went and did that and then this dude slammed into me and i came out and i shot him but then this cop came up and he he was beating me up and within an inch of my life i escaped into the building and blah 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 you know and it's like it's a whole story that happens that is only accessible through the video game. You know what I mean? Like, and that, that's what I call the micro story. So interesting. Yes. It, I would even go so far when it comes to the macro, ma- excuse me, micro story. It's even because for me, when I, especially when I play open world games, like what you're talking about, like Xenoblade Chronicles, it comes to mind. Yes. If there's this beautiful uh, environment in the background, I know, I know players uh, that like, dude. They just go. Actually, okay. So, kind of Xenoblade. This also relates to my most recent playthrough of Elden Ring, which is my first mm, one. Elden Ring's a great uh, one. I've been playing through with my brothers. Um, there are so many times where I will just like stop. I'll I'll move my character, but like at a walking pace, and just kind of pan around just to absorb the environment the beautiful work and the thing to me that always stuns me so much is how much like time and care in all of the tiniest little details that these creators put into this and i know that's that's how i live vicariously through my character is i walk slow and i take in the the uh environment around me and then i get back to it and i know players that are kind of like that and then i know players that are like dude we're just going forget the crap out of that background it might as well not even be there <laughs> we're boss rushing this crap we're going straight through it you know I, you know yeah i am fortunately am one of those players but not not to that degree because like for instance in elden ring and in dark souls i mean i'm playing through bloodborne right now and there are moments where i like get to the shot of where it like you know because those games have the from software games have like these shots where you like get to a moment and you can see the whole landscape and you can tell it they like wanted you to see this this certain look and I, I i usually do stop for about five to ten seconds and i'm like wow and then i move on um so i'm not like <laughs> you I, give it a i'm not you give it a whole <laughs> Yeah, That's I'm like not like seven years worth of work, and you give it a whole five. Seconds. But dude, but I those those stick in my mind, right? And they're good enough to be wallpapers uh-huh. on my desktop. But you know, unfortunately, what I I feel like when I play games, I have two different modes. I have the 
go, 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 gameplay, blah, blah, like move my hands, like numbers, fighting, whatever. I have that mode. And then I have the mode where it's like, uh, I'm really interested in learning about the characters in the world and everything. Um, but it, it's weird because I, I have a hard time pretending that, or not pretending, but like, I have a hard time being the character. I feel like a lot of people when they play games, they like to kind of like role play as the character and they like really like being that person. But I'm never able to differentiate myself from the, or I, I, I am always different, differentiating myself. I feel like is what I should say, where it's like, I'm, mm. I'm never the character in my brain. So it's actually easier for me to get immersed if I play games like Skyrim, where I can actually make the character and name them and create them. But for some reason, if it's someone else's creation, like if I play Final Fantasy VII, I'm, I, I, I can't role play as Cloud. I can look at Cloud the same way I would look at a character in an anime and be like, this guy's really cool and I'm really interested in his story but I'm not him. Like I, that's kind of like my mindset on it. Um, kind of, I, I, oh. I, I feel like uh, that, that's just an interesting look at uh, kind of like how I experience things. So I do think it's interesting that without that, I'm still able to appreciate what stories there are in, in games. Like I, I'm still able to like look at games without being the character. Like, and I'm interested in how being the character might, enhance the story for you um when you play oh uh oftentimes if it's a set character that has a set personality i don't necessarily role play as them like if i'm playing uncharted uh, and i'm playing nathan drake yes to me it's it's more like i am just experiencing a story to be told to me and there are mm. moments where I like relate to the character, but I don't ever necessarily suddenly start identifying as a character. I think if the characters don't have a ton of uh, personality outside of what you create for them, that's when I tend to, like what you said with Skyrim, you, the character's personality is solely relevant or like reliant on what you make it. I actually yeah. think this is a great example of like Tears of the Kingdom, Breath of the Wild. Link doesn't say anything ever, uh, ever. And yeah. it's actually yeah. oddly canon that like he doesn't say anything in that universe just because he has like consigned himself, not really to a vow of silence, but he's just kind of been like, yeah, everyone interrupts me. So I just don't really care <laughs> anymore. <laughs> like his, his own apathy caused him to. Anyway, besides right. the point, so most of his, he has mannerisms and he'll like put his hand on hands on his belt buckle when he's talking to people or like he'll get up a certain way or ha he has facial expressions. He'll pose certain ways for the camera, but most of the interactions with people, especially if they're like shenanigans style Skyrim shenanigans stuff is entirely because I made that happen. You know, I can actively choose to take off Link's shirt, put on his goblin hat, the the bokoblin hat, call him bonk, and just go around and scare people at right stables. Right. I love doing that. I, that and bonk himself. There's Link, and then there's bonk. Bonk is his own character. Right. That I forgot existed until just this moment, <laughs> and I love the crap out of bonk. Bonk to me is is exactly what you're talking about it's that like mac micro story that it's a little slice that i made that no one else maybe you know there's someone that has played tears i mean it has millions of players right there's got to be someone that had similar idea to mine but no one within my conceivable interactive social sphere yes did that and yes. I can tell that story to you, and you'll be like, yeah, I've never heard of Bonk. What the but heck he, is he? But he sounds great. <laughs> Dude, oh, I love man. Bonk. It's so funny. I will just... Bonk is the kind of character that, like, gets on a new horse and puts on all of the metal stuff and just, like, runs out into a thunderstorm just waiting for something to happen <laughs> just to see if I could get struck oh, with lightning man. and live. Yeah, yeah, it is interesting how I feel like I... It's easier for me to get immersed when I'm the one creating 
uh, the, like the person, right? Like if you throw me into a world and they're like, you, you get to decide how this plays out. It's like easier for me to get immersed into that as opposed to playing. I still like, that doesn't mean I don't enjoy playing stories where I don't do that. Like some of my favorite games, like I love Earthbound, like the whole mother series, very good, but it, it's, it, it's a set in stone story, you know? Um, the stuff that happens in that game happens every time the characters have names and they have abilities and personalities and they don't change but i still love the crap out of those games um but i'm not able to get as immersed you know i'm it's it's like i'm looking in on someone else's life instead of living my own right that's kind of like how i yeah i feel about it but um yeah but i you know dude See, what other medium can we go in depth about this kind of stuff? Like, uh, I do think that having multiple, because we, we didn't, we touched on the micro stories a lot. The multiple paths, I think, is also a very interesting thing, too, where, you know, just the fact that your choices, like, in the story can actually lead to different things is just so amazing to me. Like, I love that so much. Like, actually having a personalized experience right and the micro stories is like the ultimate version of that but like having a personalized experience that's also polished because the problem with micro stories is that you know you can only do so much with the gameplay before you get bored of it and or before you've like every micro story becomes the same thing over and over again like usually right like, like you know like everyone remembers their first time playing skyrim uh or breath of the wild or gta or whatever it is where when you have that freedom and you're going out and but before the the freaking mystical barrier of infinity i don't know if you understand what i mean by that is broken before the illusion of infinite possibilities is broken like th those experiences are so like so amazing like i do you know what i mean when i say that yeah yeah totally well when you're when you're playing a new game and it's got that shiny just you know lens on it that that first moment in breath of the wild when you're standing you just completed the tutorial and you're standing and it's like the entirety of hyrule it just sits out in front of you and the world's your oyster you know yes. you, you're kind of just kind of left to your own devices to just determine what the heck you can do and you're right there's there's an element of magic to it but then once that eventually you start to recognize the patterns of the gameplay of like, oh yes, this battle is probably going to be like this, or oh yes, yes, it's this enemy, I recognize this. Oh, this building is a stable. That's That makes sense, it's, you know. Yes, I, um, yeah, like before you know what the limits of the game are, when, when anything's possible, uh, I feel like the, like, I don't know, at least for me, it's, it's a lot more, th those times are a lot more memorable and they stick with me. Um, and I, you know, especially like first playthroughs of games as opposed to replays and stuff, like having that first experience, like I remember like when I pl first played Undertale, like that was crazy. Um, so yeah, I did want to go into maybe, uh, r real quick, we can go into what maybe our favorite narratives that we've experienced are maybe like, it doesn't have to be your like all time favorite, but just, uh, a video game story that has kind of stuck with you um like the maybe maybe one that it, it's it's because it's a video game right like something uh, about it where it's like i could only experience this because it's a video game like do you have any um do you have anything that comes to mind i know that like yes, right that, off the bat is it gonna be mass effect yeah how do okay. you know <laughs> I don't know. Just for all, anyone like, out there, like dude, guess. I am like a Mass Effect simp. I think all <laughs> endings are good endings. I think there's absolutely nothing wrong with this game. I will defend Mass Effect for eternity. I love the freaking crap out of that series. <laughs> um, but I mean, to go into it more than just me gushing over it brainlessly, my Mass Effect gushes coming out of my face. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh my god it does i'm gonna clean that up if i were to actually yeah sorry it's gonna it's be all, it's kind of a over. mess oh man um all over the train dude uh getting in the seats there are leather doubloon seats oh my god uh anyway <laughs> wait what is that um 
I have no idea. Listen, we're going we're getting into the Mass Effect thing. Okay. I'm, I'm mostly just trying to paint a picture of how much I enjoy this game. Yes. I, um Yes. I've known for a long time series now of games. how much you love it, but I'm glad I don't, yes. know, I don't know, like you, you guys at home, you guys need to understand just how much he loves this game, this game series. I, I've talked to Logan, I think, in a car for at least an hour and a half trying to convince him just to play this game. <laughs> and I, I, I still felt like I didn't get the point across good oh, enough. Oh, man. Well, it, it will happen. It will happen. I gave you my It word. will happen. It will happen. Well, okay, so to get into it, why I think it's such an excellent form of storytelling, because it's a video game, um, it has nothing, I mean, yes, it does have something to do with its sci-fi. I love the sci-fi genre, as I mentioned in uh, previous episodes, but when you're talking about immersion, it has a straight, it just hit that, like, perfect zone and knocked every single box that you were talking about in terms of immersion. You make your own character, but your character has a set role. It's a very set role as Commander Shepard. You're, you're, you have a very specific role that you're supposed to play as the commander. And there are characters that have names, but their personalities and their actions, and most importantly, their fate, changes based on your decisions and how you how you act mm -hmm. um and uh with that being said your actions have instant consequences and they have long-term consequences uh I and see. they are they are very dire and it it does have that exact thing that you mentioned where there's a points where you're just like the world is just mine to explore you're just kind of at some point like, what can I do? Yes. I can do so much and I can do right. so many different things. And and I could take this teammate with me and it changes the entire way that the mission could go, especially in the narrative. If you pick the right teammates, certain dialogues will happen. Certain events will happen. Characters will interact with each other no matter who you pick. They will always have someone you always bring generally to crewmates with you there's some special circumstances but you take two crewmates and here's something that's so interesting about it too from an immersion standpoint um i don't think i have ever come across a band of characters that i like specifically i myself by the end of the story felt like i would i would live i would die for these people <laughs> i would actually like oh, i would man. fall on the sword for these people because wow. i connect with them and i love them so much because mass effect I, I will give a warning for everyone who's trying to determine if they want to play it or not my first mass effect playthrough i'm talking one two and three the the trilogy that counts mass effect andromeda is its own thing that we'll get into some other day one two and three that was 200 hours yeah wow so it's it's an experience, but see the thing is that 200 hours is spent with the same crew. Yes. Give or take, some some members of the crew will leave your ship in one game, come back to another, and but it's it's very I, hands on, you know, because like I love one. It's Piece so hands on because it's got that crew over a thousand episodes, right? Twenty years of content with the same people, kind of what you're talking about. But but this is yeah. different because you've molded it yourself. You know, like this is something you've that molded it yourself. You've, you've built this you up. You actually, yeah. And throughout the story, um, depending on how you interact with your characters, I can tell you this: they can die. Oh, they can man. completely die as a consequence permanently in the story of your decisions. And so you have to be. Oh, man. You. It's when I was playing it, my decision making was the most important factor. My decisions as Commander Shepard are what molded the team into what it was. The teams will trust you more when you trust them more, uh, yeah. depending on if you're alien racist or not alien racist, because it's, it's sci-fi aliens space. Right. Everything about that, your crew becomes your crew and only your crew. It cannot be anyone else's crew. So that's what I mean by like, by the end of the story, if you see a crewmate in danger, like to me, that was, that was a real person 
that I loved and cared for and that helped me vicariously through Commander Shepard um, live, that helps me breathe, that saved my life, that yeah. uh, danced with me at a bar in a random spot for some reason and helped me cure planetary cancer and helped me fight off robots in, over here, but helped me repair a ship here. And, and every single character has just so much of that. And that's the reason that I feel at least that Mass Effect is an excellent story, especially because it has multiple endings. Yes. And the fact that stories that are uh, decisions you make in the first game, you won't even see the repercussions of that until the third game. So yes. you'll you'll talk to you'll talk to a random side quest guy. And depending on your decision of that side quest guy, they may or may not even be alive. And if they do live, they might be like, thanks for saving my life. And then in the third game, you pass them on the street and they're like, Commander Shepard, remember me? You saved me when those giant alien scorpions were shooting at <laughs> no us. Way. Like, And in my mind, That's I have crazy. to sit and think like, wait a minute. I remember that. And sometimes... Sometimes even this is how specific it gets. If you have the same crew member you did in that mission and the same crew member you had when you're talking to this guy now, sometimes they'll even remember. Wow. Oh yeah, remember I was on that team. I did that mission. Wow. And it it just feels so real yeah. the memory mm -hmm. that I... these that this game is able to give. Yes is an unforgettable experience not to mention the story itself is a masterpiece of suspense of high stakes yes, um, i like... honestly can't often think of a better story when it comes to high stakes but yeah anyway. like um you know of course there's different ways to experience stories and everything and mass effect i i don't think mass effect's everybody's cup of tea but it's like when it comes to being a narrative driven game, it's, I don't know if there's any other games that have done what Mass Effect has done. Like, I feel like it's reached peaks in the gaming industry that people are trying to do again. You know, I feel like even the, the people over at, uh, who even makes Mass Effect? I can't even remember. Is it Ubisoft or? Uh, Bioware. Bioware. Like, I, I feel like, like for years now, people have been trying to kind of like reach those highs, but I, they don't fully understand. I don't think why Mass Effect is so well regarded and it's because of all that stuff you just said, you know, like it not only does it hit on the choose your own path, which is like super important and it goes way deeper than you think across multiple games, the micro stories are there and then it also has the, the, the unchanging narrative. So it's like every single aspect of the storytelling is like top notch um yeah so. and like i said their character design off the charts amazing i i can tell you this i won't tell you which character because i hope i want people to play it but there is a character that gets sick or when you meet them they're sick uh it, this is my favorite character of the entire game they they have a disease they're an assassin but they have a, a terminal illness oh man and at some point they inevitably pass away there's nothing you can do because oh, it's a terminal man. illness. But man, I got to know this character inside and out. I took him on every mission. I trusted this guy all the time, every wow. time. I loved him so much. And my first playthrough, um, there's a scene where you get to basically, you're in the middle of an intergalactic war. And what I mean by that is there are planets that are like blowing up as you speak. At whole planets that are being invaded and Earth itself is being invaded. But Commander Shepard takes the time to see this one ally. And to me, it was so much more important because he was my favorite. And it, they just stand there in silence in the in the hospital wing. And you you get to choose where the conversation goes a little bit and have like a final discussion with him. And then he passes away oh, right man. next to you. And it's the scene where you're standing in silence. I, I don't know if I've bawled quite that hard in a video game ever 
wow. other than that moment. That was one of, I can never, ever forget that feeling and that character, even though, you know, I can play again always. I, I can do another playthrough uh, yeah. whenever I want to, right? Yeah. But that moment with that Commander Shepard, that specific Commander Shepard that looked that way, that made those decisions, that brought this character along every time, that can never be replicated to me. Yeah. And what's so interesting is every character, every crewmate that you can bring with you is like that, has that exact same feeling. You can pick a favorite, mm -hmm. you can grow with them throughout the entire game, you could live and die with them, you know? Yeah. Dude, it's crazy. Yeah, it's video games, bro. Like if like if you haven't sold them on Mass Effect, at least at least Kai has sold you on how why video games are such a good I, I'm trying to sell storytelling something. medium. Like <laughs> I mean you're just explaining your experience and it's it's beautiful, you know, like uh yeah, I, I you know, I've I've had emotional experiences watching and reading things, but like I feel like video games can just go that much further with it you know and the highs are higher uh -huh. when, when everything lines up and um you know not everything has to be as intricate as mass effect but i mean it's especially uh, a good a good narrative to experience like i again i don't think there's another game like it so if you do end up playing it like make sure you enjoy that first playthrough because it you know it, it'll, it'll be the most impactful probably but um, yeah, I, I don't know if I have anything to, to necessarily top that, not, not that I need to top it, but, um, just to kind of touch on some other things before we wrap up here. Um, so w when it comes to my favorite stories in gaming, like it's weird, right? Because again, me appreciating stories in games is like more of a newer thing, you know, like it's something I've had to learn to do. It wasn't something I always did. Um, and it's still hard to this day. Like I, I, I'm not a huge fan of reading like in general, like reading words is hard for my brain. I, I get very distracted. I have to reread things. I have to think about stuff for a long time before I understand them. Um, and it just is very hard. Like I don't think I read text in video games until like, like on a, on a, like a deeper level, you know, like I played Ocarina of Time my whole childhood, but I don't think I ever actually read any of the text that anybody was saying until i was like at least link 16. is just like borderline illiterate in that game like at least 16 well yeah i mean i was fortunate enough to have older siblings that i could always just ask them what do i do where do i go what does this mean uh, who, who is that where am i what is this called and they would tell me right so i i mean to, to my own detriment right because it's like i've been playing through some of my childhood games the past few years and i'm like actually reading the text and i'm like this is really well written or this is really funny or man, that's kind of impactful. That's kind of important. Like this makes me look at this character completely differently, you know, like things that yeah. were very important. Um, so I think because of that, I, I tend to lean towards games that uh, like to do storytelling through like, like silent storytelling. Like they, they, they show you and they don't tell you, um, which is why I think, my uh -huh. my current favorite game of all time that had a huge impact on me was Hollow Knight, or it still is. Um, but that game is very much a silent story. Like there is dialogue that's few and far between. Um, but most of that game, you kind of you kind of just put you put the pieces together as you explore the world, and the world's just this huge mystery. And the character you play as, I feel like I was able to really connect with because he's just this shell of like he's not like kind of like link in a way where it's like he's such a blank slate that i can kind of just like you know put myself in his shoes a lot easier he's not he doesn't have these like worldviews that i don't agree with or he he doesn't have this personality that doesn't match mine or whatever it's like I, he can he's whoever i think he is you know what i mean like uh, i feel like the more gaps there are to fill the easier it is to kind of get in there for me so I don't know. It was just so easy, especially in the time of my life when I played it to kind of just wander around the world and meet these crazy creatures and kind of try and put the pieces together myself where I was like, what happened here? And who did this? And 
by the end of the game, I didn't even fully understand. But the fact that like the game didn't have to tell me for me to understand what was going on and like I had a bunch of emotional responses to like different characters dying or uh showing up or whatever and the fact that like no words need to be said uh i don't know i feel like that's that's super intriguing to me and part of why that like it's interesting how i feel like the reason why that game speaks with me so much is like my experiences in the game the micro stories i think stick out to me more than the actual narrative itself um but then uh-huh. after, after i beat the game i i did a deep dive on the lore and the what am i remembering everything... this correctly did you if you played Hollow Knight in a cave, right? Is that <laughs> is that the one that you played? Um, oh man, I can't even remember when I told you that. So, um, I I have played Hollow Knight in a cave. I have done that. Um, but that was kind of a bucket list thing. I uh, there was a cave uh that I used to go to every now and then. It, it sounds so weird talking about it. Uh, but there's there's this there's this place that I go to hike every now and then. I I haven't been in a long time, but especially like I was, it was like around four ish four or five years ago, um, and I'd go up to that canyon and I'd always hike up to that cave, um, and I'd just go in for a little bit because it's dusty in there and kind of sketchy, you know. But I did pull Hollow Knight out in there on my Switch just to say that I I've done it. Um, but it's not like I was in there beating the game or anything. Um, I'd already okay. played. I'd already played through the game multiple times by that point, and uh, you know, I, I beat the game before it was released on Switch. And I, you know, I like the, the, your love for Mass Effect. I have for Hollow Knight. You know, I if you've watched gotcha. any of my past streams or anything, like you would know that I'm a huge Hollow Knight fan. But it's just crazy to me how I feel like the actual narrative isn't what stuck with me. It was like the personal, emotional experience and I had with it, like the um and which is i think uh you know y- y- you touched on the you know kind of the the narrative side of gaming and, and it was personalized but i just think it's so interesting to me that like even a game that's not even necessarily supposed to be this narratively cinematic game it's like because it's so immersive and the music is so like like the whole game is kind of just very somber and very like, I don't know, you just, it, you, it's almost therapeutic. Like as I was doing stuff, I would just kind of like, I, I, I just felt peace. Like everywhere I went, there was like this peace within me. Um, and I just remember every location. I remember everything I did in the game. Like the, the whole playthrough is a story in and of itself of not only what I did in the game, but where I was in my life. It's almost like this time capsule. And I, I, you know, I feel Dude, like other... Hollow Knight aligned your chakras. <laughs> it did, which is why it's such, like, it, it's why it's my favorite game, right? And why it, there still hasn't been a game that has kind of like surpassed that emotional, uh, like peak that it reached for me. Um, and it's crazy because I feel like, you know, even aside from all the narrative stuff, right? Like if. If you play a game and it's it's got cutscenes, it's got endings, it's got character development and writing and all that stuff. Aside from all of that, like the story that everybody has with their games, like I feel like just like with music, and I, I think I think music's a good example. Like games, certain games will take you back. They'll take you back to a certain time in your life. Um, when you played it, when you listened to that song, when you played this game, like. You, that part of you is like attached to like a lot of these games. I mean, if you if you grew up playing games, um, but I feel like that that in and of itself is is very beautiful. Like the stories to be told about not only the game but where you were in your life when you played it. I think is just super cool. Agreed. I concur. But yeah, thus um, it is. Yeah. Uh, do you have any? Did you have anything else to uh, bring up? I was gonna get into um, maybe the future of gaming and what it could be, but I think I'll save that for another episode. Maybe for the in between. Maybe for the in between. Yeah, our new series that should be out n- this upcoming week. Uh, so keep an eye out, uh, especially if you're if you're on YouTube. Make sure you subscribe so that you see that new show come in. But yeah, anyways, you got any you got any other 
final remarks, Kai, before we get to this stop coming up? Uh, you know, I think we've had a great discussion about games, uh, video games, what they can do. Um, I'm interested to, I think we, we should explore at some point how to get into that industry as a creator, as a story creator. Because like consuming video games is one thing, but creating video games, man, that's a whole new yes. beast. Well, just like I said, you know, it's like you have the music, you have the, you know, the gameplay and the, the cutscenes and everything. Like, just as I said, it has everything. All, that, all of those different elements that games have, have their own development. So it's just as it's like, much more work as it is. Just like, because it has cool. everything, that's everything you still have to account for. Yeah, that's actually like, it's a drawback I, I didn't really put together to right now. Because I'm like, yeah, video games, they are the... Because I don't know if you if you remember in the first episode, I said that anime is the current best way to, to experience a story. But in the future, it will be video games, like definitively. And I, I, I still believe that. Because we're still getting to the point. Because, you know, like, if every game was like Mass Effect, or if every game, like, if we had VR that was super immersive, like, completely immersive, like, it would be a lot easier to experience, like, these stories in a, a more, like, uh, immersive and memorable way. But, like, uh, dang, I, I forgot what I was saying. Um, it is train of thought. Oh, it's going. Oh, my train left, bro. Um, it, it completely left. Anyways, I, uh, oh, it was about, because we were talking about different aspects, I'll take different work, right? And then, uh huh. What did I say after that? Dude, I don't know. Uh, I can't remember. If you guys remember where that train was going, comment down below. <laughs> I can't remember. Um, dang. Well, anyways, I was talking about something about video games and story this is what i'm talking about dude my brain just like he just likes to leap sometimes and i don't know where he goes um but this really has been a good discussion i feel like you know i'm happy that you shared everything you did about mass effect and uh i, I feel like you know it was a little all over the place but uh video games they just have so much potential you know i feel like in the future they will be the best way to consume story so until then i've been logan I've been Kai, and guys, uh, just be careful who you let into your car. Yeah. Just yep. use <laughs> user discretion. It can get weird. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, see you guys. See you guys in the next one. Take care.